the engine's in. I did some wiggling around with it last night, and uh, it's right now it's not sitting centered. I have it sitting more to the left so I can uh, take off this uh, driver's side engine mount. So that engine mount hits on the bottom of the floor pan. So what I'm going to do with that one there is I'm going to unbolt it, and then I can get the engine sitting where it uh, has to be. Because right now, if I move it over, uh, it jams up on there. You can see it's still sitting on the one side. It's not really sitting level, and that's because that engine mount is uh, hitting on the bottom of the floor pan. So if you're doing a swap and you want to use that big honking transmission, uh, you're probably going to have to do a body lift. I think you, if you're going to do one, you probably have to do a body lift regardless because there isn't, well, like from the top of the, so the cylinder head isn't very high and then the block is really high. So, so if you look at the side of the engine and you look at the, you look at the space in the transmission tunnel there. Uh, depending on what transmission you put in there, it might be uh, a little bit uh, shallow because the transmission sits really high on the engine. Transmission is right here. You know, like on a V8, the top of the engine would be here and the transmission would be down here. So the, the block is really high. So, uh, Right now is uh, without that engine mount I can maybe come up another inch or two So you're regardless how you put it in your engines probably going to be sitting down low and uh, That might be the the, the determining factor of uh, uh, If you're going to do a body lift or not because the top of the transmission is going to be right near the top of the engine and another clearance issue is the uh, injection pump or the fuel filter here uh, I didn't look at it yet. I'm not sure if I can Yeah, I should be able to unbolt that and remote mount it. You know, there's no reason why I can't mount that somewhere else It's just bolted to the side of the block There's the fuel line going to the primer and there's the main fuel line going to the pump a DT 360 you don't need a lift pump. It's got its own pump on there uh, it, it draws it from the tank. Uh, I wouldn't have your tank too far away, you know, like uh, on the International the tank is like right at the rear of the engine on the on the side So if you have a long big long truck and you have your tank way at the back like mine is make sure you have a really big line Like make sure your fuel line is you know big so it has a nice easy draw all the way up I mean, a lift pump couldn't hurt, you know, it helps with priming and all that. Yeah, it does uh, suck its own fuel up. So you don't have to worry about having a lift pump if you have the tank really close. I don't know, you have to play with it. I, I don't have enough experience with it to know uh, how close you got to have the tank before, you ha before you're having issues and how much draw it has. The harder it is to suck through the hose, the harder time it's going to have and probably uh, reduce the life of the pump. If it's a nice easy draw, the pump will probably last forever. Uh, and I haven't looked at it enough. The back of it really looks like a pump, but that's the governor off the... So there's the, that air nipple right there. That air nipple feeds into the back where there's a diaphragm right there. And that controls how much how much fuel is going into it when you're stepping on it. it uh, it's like a, a boost sensor without the, all the electronics, which is pretty cool. And what else? Uh, so it's as far ahead it's as far ahead as I can go right now. So I got about uh, a half inch, half inch to an inch on the pan, like from the front of the low part on the pan to the cross member. And I got about two fingers, so I got about an inch at the back of the motor from the block to the back of the firewall. So it fits in there. It's just the, the block is really tall and the transmission sits up really high on the block. That's the only uh, tricky things. Uh, what else? Uh, I don't know if I'll ever put air conditioning on it. Uh, so I might uh, downsize the box a bit. Uh, take some components off of there. I might just switch to, uh, cause I think the air conditioning, uh, uh, heater core is in there. So I can probably just pull the whole block box off and I could always go to the pick and pull and get the, 
appropriate uh, stuff there. I'm not sure what the difference is from uh, a model with the air conditioning and a model without air conditioning. I think they all probably come with air conditioning. But uh, if I have to, I just pull all that out so it doesn't melt off the turbo. Even though the engine's got to go over a, a few inches, it still might be kind of close. So we'll see how that goes. And other than that, you know, just trying to wedge it in there. Uh, I would have, if I do it again, I probably do it the same way because I didn't want to take the oil pan off. But it fit. You just got to kind of shoehorn it in there if you leave the oil pan on with a three inch body lift. So if I need to lift up the engine, I just use the engine hoist and I'll just lift the back of the transmission up and down to where it's got to sit and then when I get the everything situated and sitting where it's gonna be uh, then I can start putting the mounts in and welding uh, welding up uh, some mounts so uh, the other truck has a cross member right in the front of the engine I'll probably pull that cross member off and then I'll have to weld in something for this one side to sit uh, I weld something back to bolt into the original cross member on the truck and then have something going across here. Uh, take a little bit of rigging up to do to get that front engine mount on. Or yeah, I'm not going to modify it too much. I'll use the same engine mount so I'll just have it bolt into something. I was thinking maybe I just cut a big uh, quarter inch plate of steel. But then, uh, you know, it, it's got to be sitting on some kind of rubber. so. So right now as it's sitting, it's sitting on the uh, jack stands. Sitting on the jack stands and blocking. So the engine is suspended and the truck is just sitting there around it. So they're not connected, it's not sitting on the truck any. So I'll position where the engine's gotta be within the truck. Uh, I'll make the mounts, mount it in place and then I can uh, jack it up, pull the jacks out and then let it down and it'll be sitting on the truck for the first time. And we'll see uh, what height it's sitting at uh, I don't think I'm going to be able to get uh, the fan from the truck in there. Uh, you can see there's the rubbers for the radiator. I should be able to fit the radiator in there. It's going to be really close to the flywheel, but it'll fit. And I got an intercooler from, uh, from a 6 liter, same year. I went and got a good radiator and a good uh, intercooler. So I'll be using a 6 liter intercooler, which is bigger than the international one. So. And it's uh, the same, uh, pretty close to the same size uh, tubes. And uh, I'll have to put uh, electric fans in it. Uh, probably won't be able to put an electric fan in between the radiator and the, and the harmonic balancer. So I'll probably just have two uh, smaller fans on the side. You know, uh, this nut comes off, that threaded, threaded part comes off. And yeah, so it'll be a radiator, intercooler, electric fans. Uh, make my own mounts. Uh, make a offset mount on that on the driver's side for the engine mount. Passenger side works well, uh, fits well, because this is this is uh, on the passenger side. There's more room there than there is on the driver's side, because that's where the exhaust went down. Uh, from the when the 5.4 was in there uh, that's where the exhaust carried back so there's more room on that side just to I guess for space for heat uh, that's another thing too when I put it in I, I had to rip I ripped out all the old uh, ratty heat shielding and padding underneath so uh, I might have to get some stick on stuff I'll uh, clean up the back of the firewall and I'll just stick it on should be able to get some stick on heat shield May not have as much insulation as the other stuff, but that's fine too. So, uh, yeah, that's where I'm at. Relocate the fuel filter, engine mounts, uh, rear engine mount. Oh yeah, another thing I was uh, thinking about. So the gauges in the in the F-350 are uh, narrow and wide, and the gauges in the International are tall and you know just as wide. So they're not gonna fit in the dash there, they're just a little bit too big. And I was thinking I'll just do all uh, mechanical gauges, but uh, you know, how would you do speed and all that other things, you have to calibrate it. And But I was looking at those all-in-one gauges you, get, you can get for race cars and stuff, or plug and play, you just put a plate on the dash 
and then you just mount the screen and then uh, you can calibrate it really easily digitally but uh, I, I think I'm still gonna go with the manual gauges the all-in-one gauge they're, they're like 750 bucks and that's US funds so here it's like a thousand dollars for one I don't have a thousand dollars to spend on that and for another you know that's uh, a fair bit of money that I could spend uh, somewhere else I'll probably be driving the truck without any gauges for the first little bit and then using the GPS for my speed which is the plan I just get it running and driving and then I gotta haul manure Get it running and driving and then I gotta haul uh, loads of scrap into town so I can get some money from that and then I gotta get uh, manure for the garden so I'll throw the box on the box uh, sides on it and then I go get a load of manure dump that on the garden and then uh, haul some more scrap with it clean up the yard and get some concrete and uh, move the container uh, put up a storage building uh, I gotta pour piles, I gotta pour uh, walkways around the shop. So, uh, need to save whatever money I can for all the things coming up because I definitely don't have enough money for that either. So, a thousand dollar gauge is out of the question. But if a, if a guy were to do it and you got the money and you want something cool, you know, it's a lot easier to calibrate one of those all-in-one gauges than it is to try to put mechanical gauges on the dash. It's either I get the dash working in the truck, and I'm not even sure how it works in the truck. It could uh, be off the rear end, and it could be off the back of the transmission. It's probably a bit of both. I think the rear end is just for the ABS system. And the ABS system, I don't know if that runs independently. I think you need the computer in the truck to uh, run the ABS system. So I don't know. I got, I got to figure out what I want to keep and what I, you know, because if I if I'm keeping the same dash in the truck, uh, you know, to get a scanner that you can program that and change uh, speeds and all that, you know, it's like 2,500 to you know end up. So it's either uh, 2,500 uh, 2,500 or more to get a scanner that I can reprogram the computer in the truck to read all the all the changes and not have an engine light you know or you can turn sensors off and stuff like the o2 sensors i'm not going to be using those a knock sensor oil pressure sensor even though in the 5.4 is just a switch uh I'd probably use that so i can see it on the dash but the gauge on the dash is a piece of junk for oil pressure manifold pressure uh mass airflow sensor other sensors on the on the 5.4 that aren't necessary on the a DT360. Turn off almost all the sensors and then still have the speed sensors hooked up somewhere. Find some way to hook up the speed sensor from the Ford transmission on onto this transmission and then uh, so I could still have the input for that to make the speedometer work. Uh, and then RPM sensor. RPM on the 5.4 it's just that uh, wheel on the front behind the timing case. So I just uh, mount the wheel on there uh, have the camshaft position sensor near the wheels so it picks up rpm so that's not too hard it's just turning off all the other sensors that's the hard part is turning off all the sensors and, and getting it to work so you don't have an engine light on twenty five hundred dollars for a scanner to do that or more or uh, all in one gauge that uh, you can get for a hundred percent mechanical you know you just get all your sensors uh, so the gauge itself is 700 bucks, but then you got to buy each one of those sensors. So, you know, 700 bucks uh, U.S. and Canadian, thousand bucks, and then you probably got uh, 300 bucks a sensor. So 1,500 bucks for the all-in-one gauge, and then you just put all your sensors all over the engine, you know, to get get whatever readings you want. Or I grab that uh, dash from the International, just take a, a sawzall and then just put it in there, and then uh, uh, and then and then pull the little dial off and then move it so it matches up at 100 kilometers an hour like going down the highway or something so so my speedometer works at one speed uh, but every other gauge will work so so my rpm everything else will be accurate and good but uh, the speedometer won't be accurate because the ratio on the rear end in this one is different i think it's uh, 410 to 1 and i think the ratio in that truck is three something to one so we'll see uh, a lot of things to work out yet but uh, not too bad